The late 18th century marked the beginning of a turbulent era in India with the oppressive rule of the East India Company. Under the shadow of this imperial power, an unlikely hero emerged in the southern region of Panchalam Kurichi. His name was Veera Pandya Kataboman. Born into a lineage of chieftains, he inherited the leadership mantle at the tender age of 30. Yet, his young age did not deter him from understanding his people's plight and the unjust practices of the East India Company. In these colonial times, the company was not just a trading entity, it had transformed into a political and territorial power, controlling vast swaths of India. One such control was over the Carnatic region where Panchalam Kurichi was located. A treaty in 1781 had granted the company power over the Carnatic revenue, leading to the imposition of new tax collection methods. These methods were far from fair. They were coercive, exploitative, and often humiliating for the local population. As the Palayakara of Panchalam Kurichi, Kattaboman was expected to comply with these practices. But he was not one to bow down. Instead, he chose defiance. He chose to resist the oppressive tactics of the East India Company, making him a beacon of rebellion. His courage and determination resonated with the common folk, who found in him a leader willing to challenge the might of the British colonial rule. This initial resistance marked the beginning of Kataboman's journey as a freedom fighter. It set the stage for a series of confrontations with the East India Company, each escalating the tension between the local leaders and the foreign rulers. Yet, through it all, Kataboman stood firm, his resolve unbroken. Thus began the journey of Veerapandya Kataboman, a symbol of unwavering resistance against the British. In the midst of this turmoil, Kataboman had a significant confrontation with Jackson, an arrogant English officer. The stage was set by a dispute over land revenue arrears amounting to 3,310 pagodas. Jackson, eager to assert his authority, aimed to send an army to collect this sum. However, the Madras government wouldn't have it, denying him permission for such a drastic measure. Instead, a meeting was arranged for September 19th, 1798, a meeting that would prove to be far from cordial. Kataboman, having waited for three hours, was met with nothing but haughtiness from Jackson. Sensing danger, Kataboman made a daring attempt to escape with his minister, Sivasubramaniana. A clash ensued at the Ramanathapuram Fort Gate, leading to casualties on both sides and the capture of Sivasubramaniana. This incident further fueled Kataboman's rebellion against the British. Following the confrontation with Jackson, Kataboman took his grievances to the Madras Council. His account of Jackson's high-handedness and arrogance led the council to launch an investigation into the matter. The probe unfolded, revealing a truth that justified Kataboman's resistance. The council, acknowledging the unfair treatment, dismissed Jackson, marking an unprecedented victory for Kataboman. With Jackson out, a new collector, S.R. Lushington, was appointed. Though the change in power brought a sense of hope, the challenge of revenue arrears still loomed large. Displaying his commitment to his people and the council, Kataboman took it upon himself to reduce the outstanding revenue from 3,310 to 1080 pagodas. His efforts further highlighted his unwavering dedication to his people and his land. Throughout this process, Kataboman remained steadfast in his resistance against the oppressive rule of the British East India Company. In the face of British oppression, Kataboman sought allies among the Confederacy of Palayakaras. This confederacy was a formidable alliance founded by the influential Marudu Pandya. With the support of various Palayakaras, this alliance aimed to challenge the British rule in South India. Kataboman, driven by his indomitable spirit, yearned to be part of this resistance. But joining this confederacy was no small feat, especially with Collector Lushington standing in his way. Despite the hurdles, Kataboman's determination remained unbroken, 
In time, Catabomon and the Marudu brothers decided to confront the British. Their decision was a courageous act, leading to a significant clash with the company's forces in Tirunelveli. This confrontation, a momentous event, symbolized the united front of the Palayakaras against British colonial rule. This marked the beginning of an intensified struggle against the East India Company. The British forces, led by Major Bannerman, moved to Panchalamkurichi, marking a pivotal point in Kataboman's rebellion. In the late spring of 1799, Bannerman's army advanced from various strategic points, including Tiruchirapali, Danjavur, and Madurai. This force, bolstered by the support of the Travancore troops, was a formidable one. On the first day of September that same year, an ultimatum was issued to Kataboman demanding his surrender. Yet, Kataboman was not a man to bow down easily. He evaded the British forces, choosing to stand his ground rather than submit to their demands. Five days later, on September 5th, Major Bannerman's army descended on Panchalam Kurichi. The fort was isolated and a strategy was devised based on intelligence gathered from a local ally, Ramalingana. A significant clash occurred at Kalapati, resulting in the capture of Kataboman's minister, Siva Subramaniana. Following this, Kataboman fled to Pudukotai, a move that led the British to offer a reward for his capture. Betrayed by the rulers of Etayapuram and Pudukotai, Kataboman was eventually apprehended. A mock trial, overseen by Bannerman himself, was conducted in front of the Palyakaras on October 16th. During this trial, Kataboman, with his head held high, confessed to all charges. His execution followed swiftly. Kataboman was hanged from a tamarin tree in Kayathar's old fort near Tirunelveli. His life ended there, but his spirit lived on. His fellow Palyakars were present, bearing witness to his ultimate sacrifice, Virapandya. Kataboman's heroic resistance and ultimate sacrifice became a beacon of inspiration for India's struggle for freedom.